Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ray Tornu. Welcome back to Crusader Kings 3, Wards and Wardens, as we are playing as the Duke of Lorraine. So the first thing I'd like to do in today's episode is try and set up a marriage for our daughter. And I haven't actually tested this, so I don't know if he's going to agree to it. But if he will, then he'd be a powerful ally against our rival, who I assume is going to be our character's key enemy. Uh, so his son, 23 years old, is not yet married. He is an only child, so would be set to inherit all of his duchies. So I didn't notice that he was already landed. He has a couple counties here. He'd still be a useful ally. And we already outnumber the Duke over here. He only has 1,077 troops here. So, you know, even these few troops helps, considering that we have 2,000 of our own. And this is a, a more long-term alliance, and that's if he'll even agree to it. Because remember, our daughter is very young, so he's going to have to wait quite some time, because she's only two. So it seems he would agree to it. And so therefore, I think we're going to do this alliance here. Again, it's kind of looking into the, into the future, since he only has these two counties right now. But yeah, we're not going to want to expand that way. We're going to want to expand north as well as in the surrounding territories. There's a bunch of uh, counties that we might want to take here. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do this alliance. Seems he'll agree to it. Uh, but you'll see that there are several smaller rulers here. Uh, we don't want to go after these prince bishops. Yeah, there's several smaller rulers that we could attempt to either attack or find other ways of assimilating them into our lands. So here we have an unmarried princess who holds a few titles, but this is a religious title. That's the reason why she got those clothes, despite the fact that she's not actually a nun. And so you would not be able to, to uh, arrange a marriage here. But yeah, there's surrounding lands you might want to go after. As far as our sons, I think we're going to wait because there are quite a few uh, different marriages with some rather younger children here that we might want to do but i want to see how the situation develops how many children they end up having because a lot of these characters are pretty young like the emperor here you know he's he's only 18. he's gonna have plenty of children more than likely this would be a marriage into the current royal family the salian dynasty but more than likely that is going to be changing because this is an elective monarchy so yeah i don't know if we'd want to do this or not unless we we're going to get something out of it you know as of right now she's set in hair but again he'll probably have plenty of more children with his young wife. So we'll see how that develops. But there's a lot of other rulers that have, you know, some essentially good marriages. We won't dip around and look at them all, but this is kind of the situation in some of the surrounding territories. Who's all ruling? Who has children? But yeah, we'll arrange those marriages for our sons a little bit later. Uh, let's just go ahead and do this tournament, guys. Got that, that alliance. And now we are at the tournament. All right, excellent. We need to turn this down a little bit if we want to be able to do anything over here uh, because, yeah, we want to participate in some of these activities here. Uh, we did get an event about the finer points of diplomacy. Is this the... Yes, this is for our second son, his trait. So as of right now, he has the honest. He just got the trusting, so we can let him keep that. And I guess that would be interesting for uh, a martial character. Very trusting, very honest. Could instead make him forgiving, or could make him patient. None of these are going to really help him when it comes to being a knight. Yeah, I think we'll just do the trusting. Let him keep that. I think that's fine. Alright, so we're not likely to qualify. Remember, our character does not have a great prowess. And so we're going to go to the tourney grounds to try and practice, see if we can't improve our chance. Again, I, I don't expect that uh, triumph, I mean, triumph, I mean, this is going to be very likely, but we have seen before that some of our worst characters sometimes can, can win these. Feathered Entertainment. Go, Songbird. Go faster. I hear a man's voice echo across the grounds. I look up to see a small thing hurrying through the sky like a little black bolt of lightning. Soon enough, it swoops down towards a finishing line. Bah, you must have cheated. Your bird cannot fly that fast. Just look at her. She's barely a fledgling. The angry loser shouts with the winner looking smug. So we say this was excellent entertainment, lose some stress. Double or nothing, go again. This is a martial challenge. We're gonna make a bet. 
or say we don't have time for this, this increases our score slightly, which is our goal, but what would our character do? Well, he's diligent and temperate. So I don't think we're gonna bet here. We're focusing on improving our skill. So yeah, let's say we don't have time for this. That's not why we came to the tourney grounds. And therefore we are now on track to qualify. Of course, that doesn't mean that we're gonna actually be able to win anything. Uh, the first competition is the wrestling and then there's gonna be a duel. Okay, so some interesting events. I don't know that we've ever done the wrestling in any of these Let's Plays. Could be wrong. And the next event is going to be about 10 days away here. And unfortunately the wrestling has already started so we were only able to do one thing because we had that on that speed of five. And we did qualify so that's what's important. We got that prestige and we got the has looter trait which just getting that is gonna give us that nice bonus, the opinion for any other characters that have it. And yeah, we'll have to see if we can't improve our skills here. All right, so the wrestling contest begins and we're gonna be fighting this count here. And he is equally terrible, slightly better than us, I think. Yeah, eight to nine. So very, very close here and I'm ready. All right, so we have the ability to sabotage him but I just don't feel like we're the sabotage type, so we won't. Some characters will do that with, uh, but yeah, we will not be doing it with this character. And so we're gonna say, this is no way to win. My body thuds into the wooden wall at the edge of the arena. Seiko, having bodily hurled me there with a snarl, no sooner has he done so that his face morphs into a smug smile, and to my astonishment, he turns away from me completely. Raising his arms to the baying crowd, he curls his arms up and flexes in the imitation of a traveling strongman. The cheers from the crowd redouble. Those fickle peasants are eating it up. So he say, face me, coward, or I'll teach him to show his back to me. And I feel like that's what we'd do. Yeah, to try and uh, win this here. I mean, you see we do not have good progress to victory currently. Nothing to really say we'd go either way here, so let's go with this one. And we do increase our progress to victory. The crowd bays for blood as I staggered forward to confront my opponents again. I cup away a red rivulet from my forehead and consider the fight so far, musing about when I use dirt to blind my opponent. When did we do that? We didn't do that. I don't know, we've continued to see like little issues here with these tournaments. Anyway, the bout is close, so close, one mistake by either of us could end it in an instant. Yeah, I feel like we didn't, maybe that last event, maybe we threw dirt in his face. I was thinking we just uh, took advantage of his back being turned, but maybe we threw some dirt in his face, I don't know. So we say that liver looks vulnerable. This is a combined prowess marshal challenge. We do have very good marshals, so probably the route we'd want to go. Uh, come, let us lock up as warriors. This is a diplomacy challenge. I mean, there is not that big of a difference here. 37% chance that we get the favorable outcome. This is 34%. Faint low, go high, intrigue challenge. So same percentage there, that's interesting. Or keep it simple. That's the worst, because we're relying on our prowess, which of course he is better than us. So I'm assuming it's because his stats are, no, they're not similar to us. Interesting. All right, well, I feel like we're more of a martial character over an intrigue character, so we'll go with this option. I want to see who won here. And it looks like we won. All right, excellent. I tend to throw my opponents, but as soon as I do, I am sent flying through the air myself. I land hard, the wind leaving my lungs with a groan. I am immediately on the defensive, straining to keep from being pinned down. Moments later, I manage to catch Seiko off guard. I make my move, pinning him soundly, holding him tightly in place as he struggles in vain to escape. The judges call an end, and I have won. So we achieved our first victory. So yeah, not too bad there. We luckily face somebody who is of similar skills and so now we're going to be facing probably a much better character yeah 14 prowls here this is a lowborn character all right so we'll see if sigmund can do any better we're not going to concede obviously because we can do this all right so outside interference oh the emperor is getting involved that's interesting remember he's our friend it is with no little relief that I hear the voice of my friend Heinrich. The blessed distraction causes the arbitrator to march over to the pit wall 
and my opponent, Sigmund, to hesitate just a fraction, enough for a forearm to the face to stun him momentarily. The crowd aren't happy with the ga gamesmanship, and various items begin raining down to the pit. Fruit, vegetables, even a small stool. Indeed, said stool lands close enough for me to pick it up, and the referees turn back as he deals with Heimrich's arranging, giving me the smallest seeding, seedling of an idea. So we can uh, basically smack him with it, increase our score moderately, and we'll gain some trade experience in the hash to the looter, sp specifically in the foot skill. Or we say enough of this underhanded nonsense. We'll still get that experience, just not as much. But our score actually decreases. But what would our character do? There's nothing to really say that he would do either. Yeah, there's really not much to say that he would be willing to smack this guy <laughs> with the stool or that he wouldn't. Yeah, I would say even with the temperate trait, yeah, there's not really anything. Don't shy away from hard work, though. And you can say this is a lazy option, I suppose. Yeah, I feel like this is enough of this underhanded nonsense. Let's go with this route, probably lose. But at least we can feel good about ourselves. Uh, so there's always a chance we can change it around as well. We are losing, and by a fair margin, the path to victory is narrow, but it's still possible. So let's go with this option, though of course, uh, well, we actually have a much better chance of winning with this option, despite his decent marshal there. And he has better prowess as well. So we're going to go with that same option. Maybe his skills don't uh, retain to this at all. Yeah, we'll go with that. I'm figuring we probably lost here. We'll just have to see. Yeah, looks like we did lose, unfortunately. He caught us off guard, and as I try to regain my composure, he knocks me to the ground, pinning me in a vice-like grip, and I struggle in vain, unable to break free. The judges call an end, and I have lost. Confounded. Well, we, we took the high road, and we faced defeat. Alright, so these guys will be com competing without us. We'll see who wins it. And it looks like uh, Sigmund has reached the final here, the guy who defeated us. And we'll see who wins the final. The finale here. And it looks like he lost. Engelbert won. Alright, so he had like a, a similar prowess here. But at least he was a noble rather than a, a lowborn here. Who's got a plant rash. Uh, so, a fine contest. So now we're moving into the next stage, which is clearly broken here. Uh, we are on track to qualify just barely. But yeah, there's always next time. Uh, let's go and pause this real quick, because we're going to go ahead and compete in the tourney grounds again, trying to increase our chance of a victory here. So, a fine favor. So, as I prepare for my upcoming match, I spot Countess Adel uh, Adelheid of Dern, hailing me by waving a handkerchief around, offering me her favor. Alright, so that's this, nope, I was going to say is the mayor's spouse, but she actually doesn't have a husband. That's her regent right now. Okay, so she's got the, the one county, quite a few claims here. She's an older woman, but, uh, you know, we're older than she is. And uh, we're lustful, so... I suppose we should finish reading this, because it seems there's another development here. Before I can respawn, the Countess Hildegard, a much younger pregnant woman, and her spouse is her regent. And she has, I was going to say two counties. She's got a county and a barony here. So she's more attractive in many different ways. She appears holding a handkerchief out for me and insisting I take her favor instead, and clearly that's what her character would do. So yeah, we'll get the favor of a lady, and that gives you that increased renown and romance scheme power, so that's nice. And then, uh, you know, she'll start a romance scheme against us, which we're all for. And obviously we'll irritate her, not, uh, not surprising there. And we'll get 150 prestige, and this also increases your chance of winning. So yeah, we'll take Countess Hildegard's favor. 
And so we get this romance event declaration of love. I'm walking the gardens with some of the lords at court when I notice Countess Hildegard approaching. I step aside to let her pass, but to my great surprise, she blocks my path and kneels before me. Before I have time to properly process this turn of events, the Countess begins to sing. I quickly recognize the tune. It is a famous Franconian love ballad. I have heard it performed countless times, but never with such skill and passion. The intense emotions of the song are mirrored in Hildegard's gaze, which is set on me. She does not look away for a single heartbeat. So we say, you flatter me, my lady. Or tell her to abandon this foolish endeavor, but uh, no. We feel quite flattered. We're all ready to be romanced. Alright, so next event we'll be able to do in uh, 20 days here. And we're waiting for the duel to begin, which is in 40-something days. So we'll be able to do the, the tourney ground. I'll have to pick uh, another one. How are we doing on money? We got some, we got some money. So we'll probably want to visit the Artisan Quarter. Though, maybe you might want to do the Tavern. I mean, we're not really stressed out or anything. Yeah, I suppose we'll go to the Artisan Quarter. Let's see what we can purchase. Maybe we'll get something... I can't seem to move this event, but maybe we'll get something to help us win the next tournament match. Uh, so this is a new purchase from the Tailor. I'm not sure how his name is pronounced. If it's like Bernard, or is the D silent or something? But we find him cutting a piece of cloth. A couple of tables have been disposed to display his work. Stockings and head coverings, hoods and sleeves. Opposite, a hearth lightly burns. Careful there, he warns me, almost dropping the tool. You're about to trip over the linen, my lord. He, apo he apologetically mumbles, quickly picking up the clothes. I'm sure I can guess the motive of your visit. His face is barely poking out of the mess. So we can say, actually my... My favor of a lady could use some decoration. We'll pay him 15 gold, and he'll get a decorative ribbon, increasing the prestige. I didn't know you could do that. That's interesting. We could just buy this ornate ribbon, and this would be another item for us, increasing prestige and our seduce scheme power. Hmm. Well, that seems like something we'd definitely want. Doesn't help us in the tournament at all, though. You could say, some banners will encourage the audience to cheer for me. So this is only 10 gold, and uh, we'll get a opinion boost with our courtly vassals, increase our score slightly, or here keep up the good work, and we just give them some money, or just one gold. Well, I know we came here for a certain reason, but uh, I don't know if we can not get this ornate ribbon, knowing how it's going to make the ladies wild. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like Gerard has got to get this one even though we could have helped ourselves out a bit more. All right, so uh, I don't know if we'll be able to do another event. It looks like we can do one more. And so we'll probably just do the, the tourney grounds again. That's what I'm thinking. With the chance we might be able to improve our score here. So where victory is fostered. My knights stand assembled for the day's training. Their attendants laden with kit. Count Falmar and myself stand before all. Knights, what you do not know, ask humbly to be taught, urges Falmar. Together we represent the Duke. Let us together prepare for our glories. He turns to me, eyes gleaming, command us. So we can say watch our opponents learn their weaknesses. That would increase our skill here, our chance of winning. To your saddles, draw your swords. This also increases our score. And it helps our knights as well. It looks like it's a, a slight increase. This one here is, is slight for us, but moderate for the knights. Well, this one is slight for both of us, but we all get the experience, and that has to looter trade. Or, knights, prove your keenness, both of eye and mind. I think we're going to do this one. To your saddles, draw your swords. And so that'll improve our chance of winning here, so that's good. I don't think we'll be able to do another event. No before the uh, next event, the duel, kicks up here. So we'll have to see if we can win this one. We did qualify. And we're going to be fighting this count over here. Uh, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. We're going to say Duve? Duve? We'll call him Duve. And again, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing anything. Do we want to bet on this? Not really the betting type. Yeah, and I don't know that we're going to win, so 
I mean, we do have a better prowess than him. Maybe like a small bat or something. Why not? We'll bet on ourselves. It's not much. You could also bet on somebody else, of course. You could bet on uh, one of these other guys to win it all. Probably want to bet on the guy that beat us. But we're going to bet on ourselves. Because we're going to win this. We got this, guys. <laughs> Alright, so... This is a hobbled combatant. So cuffing some dirt away from my eyes, I steady myself as the hoots and hollers of the crowd raid down around me. Duvet is a little way away, the pair of us having disengaged briefly to catch our respective breaths. The bane of the spectators quietens a bit as we begin to circle each other slowly. One wrong move could end this fight in an instant. Duvet's eyes narrow almost imperceptibly. As we circle, I notice a small puff of dust being thrown up under his right foot every time he takes a step. It's almost like he's limping slightly. Hmm. So we could take advantage of this intrigue prowess challenge, 74% chance of success, but he could be bluffing. Yeah, we'll go with this. And he was bluffing, so our score has decreased. We fell right for it. Well, we're not the greatest fighter, so not surprising. All right, so a screeching chorus of metal on metal rings out as two blades scrape down each other's lengths, sparks glittering as they fall to the ground. I look for advantages, thinking back to when I tried identifying my opponent's weaknesses earlier. The duel is still so close, its victor could still be either of us. We advance upon each other once more. We are both battered, both tired, and there can only be one winner. I really hope we win this one round at least. Uh, we can say I must remember my training, and I suppose that's what we'll go with. Rely on that House Marshall challenge. Let's see if we can't get a victory here. I'd like to come out of this with at least one win. And uh, no, we did not get it. So we got one win in the wrestling match, but couldn't pull out one in the uh, the duel. Alright, so he defeated us. We've been confounded. And so we lost our money. Uh, and also we got wounded, but our doctor successfully treated us. And so we'll just have to see who wins the duel. And uh, see who we should have bet on. Uh, looks like it doesn't matter. Oh, this is still the semi semifinals. All right, so Dubé is still in it. So we're in the finale here. And it looks like... Oh, well, that's interesting. We got an event about being in the crowd. You don't typically see these very often. Small tales. So being part of a crowd at a sporting event can be a real treat. The atmosphere, the sound, and the sights. Only problem is, it can sometimes bring as many downsides as it does boons. One such downside has just materialized. I find myself stuck behind the large frame of Visitor. I lean first one way and then the other, but his sheer size occludes the action almost perfectly. Is he a really big guy? Doesn't seem like a really big guy. So we sigh loudly and tap her foot. He doesn't budge. We miss something huge. And now we are upset. So we can say, I'll make you kneel to watch. And a fight will at least solve the problem one way or another. We'll gain the trait wounded. Are we already wounded? Well, I guess we got that uh, good treatment, so we're not wounded at all. We could form a rivalry with them. This will cost us 75 prestige. He'll become severely injured. Or you say, excuse me, could you please move? This is a dipl uh, diplomacy challenge. I don't know that we'd really go either way with, with any of these these options. I don't really think that fits our character that much. We can try the diplomacy challenge and see what he says. And he actually was willing to uh, move for us. Right, nice. I don't think we had any stress to lose there. Uh, but who won the events? Uh, looks like it was the Duke of Bohemia. Okay. So that wasn't even an option for us to vote on. Or excuse me, to bet on. So there's no way that we were winning that bet. Alright, so there's always next time. Probably not. We're already a 47-year-old a man. This is probably going to be our only tournament that we compete on. But it was still fun. We didn't win anything, but I feel like we had a good time. And that's what matters, right? 
We got that new trade as well. I don't know how well we did on progress. Uh, did we get the foot? Almost. It seems we're just short. We need one level of experience. Okay. So let's go ahead and speed this back up. Get home quickly. And that Regency. You know, we can't trust that spouse of ours. And our liege has increased uh, to limited crown authority. We might want to take a look at our own crown authority and go ahead and enact limited crown. Yeah, let's go and do that, guys. So we weren't able to do that before. We didn't have the, the prestige to do so. So now before we even pause this and start making some progress here, we're going to go ahead and fabricate a claim on his territory. Because obviously we need to have a reason to declare war. Uh, so we're going to go after this location here and see if we can't get a, a cause for war. Cassus Belli. Now faction was created against us. Okay, so just this count so far, it's a Liberty faction. And uh, our knight improved there, and we were finally able to sway him. All right, excellent. That's what we're waiting on, my friends, uh, to get him swayed so we can get that full taxes and levies from the church. And so now we're going to go ahead and stop our efforts to sway him and begin our efforts to seduce. So I was saying romance in the previous episode, but yeah, we're not wanting to romance these ladies. We want to seduce them. Those are two separate actions in this game. And we're going to start with our tutor in court position. And she's lustful as well. So she might be receptive to these seduction attempts. So 95% chance of success. It's going to take 12 months to do it. I'm sure our wife will very much appreciate this. So we got an event involving our wife here, Divide and Conquer. So it seems that another count has begun to support that Liberty faction. And she is able to tell him a few things about this other guy. That would result in him leaving that faction and not joining another faction for 20 years. That's pretty useful. So yeah, I almost feel bad. I'm about to cheat on her. Almost. So uh, yeah, let's say make sure that Herman never supports Siegfried again. And a play date. So it seems that both of our sons were invited by this Duke Dirk. Not the most trusting of fellows here. He invited both of our sons. That's risky having them both go, but sure, why not? I don't think we're the most distrusting person ourselves. I would get our first martial perk as well. And our first uh, seduction event here, a gift of labor. So everyone appreciates a gift, but perhaps I could come up with something truly unique that would make a real impression. So we can commission poetry on the joys of life dedicated to her. A wood carving of a castle, or say perhaps not. So this is if she appreci appreciates architecture. I think we'll just go with this option. Yeah, sure she'll like some poetry, right? Alright, so we're about to get our first Marshall perk here. Or I guess we've got several, but the first one we've been able to select, and it's obvious which one we should go for, right? Increase our scheme power for romances and eloping. So it'll allow us to do those a bit quicker, which is what's really important in our character's life. Well, we also have a bit of money. Let me just see how much this would cost. Only a hundred if we wanted to get the walls and towers. But I think we're going to get the, the barracks here, guys, since we have the, the heavy infantry stationed here. Also, it gives us those 100 levies. So, yeah, we'll get this. This will be 150. Yeah, we need to start building up the capital here. And it seems that uh, she very much liked the poetry. So, we got the budding interest modifier. And this is Beatrix's first enrobing. So, as I patiently await the fetching of my clothes, a servant stutters. My lord, no one can find your garments. I'm surrounded by incompetence, mutter I, storming from my bedchamber. It's in the nursery of my daughter, Beatrix, that I discover not only my raiments, but also the girl's wet nurse. I had no part in it, my liege. She dressed herself. <laughs> so she's wearing our clothes. This is one of those new events here with the wards and wardens. And so we can say the little scoundrel gained some prestige, increased opinion. We say, so she's a princess of fashion, and then she'll get the nickname Princess of Fashion. I feel like I gotta go with that one, right? 
Or say I don't have time for this. Yeah, let's go with that one. She'll be the princess of fashion for the rest of her life. I like that. Uh, also, we got an invitation to go to hunt. All right, well, let's pause this here. Because uh, we got our romance scheme here, or our seduction scheme. The celebrations have come to an end, and the evening's entertainment seemed to be over when Alma Berga suggested a reading. A clerk soon arrives, wondering what the guests would like to hear, and I see my, and I see my chance to impress her. So we can say something pious. Would you like something pious? I feel like no. I mean, maybe. You say, let's be entertained east of the Indus. Or spiritual medicine would give us a chance to learn. I feel like that's the one that she'd want, given that she's a doctor. Yeah, let's go with that one. It's informative. And she is completely engrossed. And uh, told us it was a good choice. Not surprised there. Alright, so let's go ahead and participate in this hunt. We haven't done a hunt yet. Oh, let me see how far this is going to be, actually. That's not too far away. Yeah, that's not, uh, that's not too bad. So why not? Let's go ahead and do a hunt. And see if we might be successful. Uh, do we need to leave right now? Yeah, we should probably leave right now, just in case we get delayed. There's uh, many potential things to delay us. That does freeze our scheme, unfortunately. And gives our wife control of the Regency again. Alright, so we've made it to the hunt, guys. And it is one of the, the Falcon ones. Which generally you don't succeed in. But you can get some good events here. We got uh, 50 gold on this one. And uh, lost some stress that we didn't have. So unsurprisingly, the hunt did fail. And that's generally what happens with those Falcon ones. Sometimes they succeed. But we did get the Hunter trait. So that's helpful. That gives us that uh, plus one prowse. And uh, you can see our, our prowse is going down now due to the old age. And our children did return safely. Wasn't entirely sure how that would go down. And our wife tried to obtain some gold as we mandated her to do so, but she did fail. So she lost some piety and prestige and stuff. All right, so we arrive back home. These are real short travels, so no travel events. And uh, another one of these wards and wardens events here. Her first teething. So with my leave, my daughter Beatrix and her wet nurse parade into my chamber. Ilza poses like a herald and proclaims, My liege, you witness a monumental occasion. Beatrix has a mighty gift to offer you. She nudges her forward. Go ahead, Beatrix, tell him. Father, I lost my tooth. My daughter proudly presents her toothless smile, handing me a pouch with a fallen tooth inside. So we could say, lovely, but keep your tooth as a good charm. So this is her milk tooth. She'll have that, increasing her prestige. We could say here, a gift befits a gift. We give her 15 gold, and we'll become the owner of her tooth. Okay. Or I don't have time for this. I feel like we'll go with this one here. Also increase our prestige. It's always helpful. And I wanted to take a look at how we're doing on getting this done. We're at 13 months currently. Also, we have an uh, invitation to a feast. Do we want to participate in this feast here? Oh, we got a one-eyed Prince Bishop. I think that's a little far away, guys. Yeah. I think that would take too long to get over there. And, you know, if we clicked on here, we'd see it take three months. We are trying to seduce young ladies right now. We do not have time for these feasts here. So, Shield of Knowledge. So, I understand you are interested in deepening your grasp on warfare. Balder takes in his surroundings as he approaches me. Might be able to help you see the battlefield in new ways. So, he's well known for his mastery of sound defense. If there's one who could help me understand, it would be him. And we can get the Unyielding Defender. It's always a nice trait to have. Yeah, we'll take that. He'll become our mentor as well. He's a much younger guy. Who actually has less skill than we. But whatever. Doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> yeah, we want to learn. A dark cave. So one of the children at court. I have no idea how to pronounce her name. Uh, but she had taken the wooden warrior of a younger girl and thrown it into a nearby cave. 
My son was there and saw it all happen. Gerard got hold of the household guards and forced her to go into the cave, and her terrified screams could be heard for several minutes before she emerged with the toy. It seems that when Gerard thinks something uh, the right thing to do, or thinks that something is the right thing to do, he won't stop until it makes it happen. Uh, so this is actually one of those uh, childhood trait events. I didn't realize that, uh, but I, I usually don't read these. But I think we're going to encourage him to be brave rather than wrathful or stubborn. That would be really good for uh, him as a knight. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll take the stress. It's going to be 30 stress because remember we get the increased stress gain uh, with our character. And is he going to try and... Uh, yeah, looks like he's trying to, to do this rebellion here. I did not take a look and see how bad the faction had gotten. And it looks like we're facing a fairly large faction at this point because many of our vassals has joined. Okay, so that's unfortunate. We're going to have to fight these guys. And they actually have a pretty good sized army here. So we're going to have to put this rebellion down. So distractions from our romancing. <laughs> but we are not going to just go with this. No, I don't think we will. Uh, we will not be threatened. Force them to rebel. And then we'll rally the troops. Uh, and their military strength is inferior to ours. Well, that's interesting because they seem like they had a lot more troops than they did before. And yeah, it doesn't look like it's adding them in quite right here. Or maybe it's counting their allies. Looks like they're counting the allies here. Alright, so let's go and rally our own troops. And then we're going to call in our allies here. Because we could definitely use them. And it seems that the Prince Bishop here expects a council position. He's not very good at anything. I guess his entry is alright. But yeah. He won't be getting a position at this moment. We still haven't found anybody for the accolade just yet. We actually don't have any noble ladies in our court. I did look if we could do a marriage for this character here. But he's a noble, so would not marry any of the lowborn women that we are seeking to uh, romance ourselves. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get our troops raised up. Let me just see where these rebellions are. Uh, so it looks like we got this one over here, this one here, and this one here. Uh, who has that large army? Because we're going to take them out first. It's going to be this guy. So yeah, we want to raise our army up over in this area. So yeah, let's go ahead and get the rally point moved over here. And we don't want to uh, move it too close. And then we're going to want to raise up all the, the troops here. And make sure... They don't split up. I highly doubt they would because it's not like we have a very large army. Alright, so we're going to raise up these 1900 dudes and then I'm going to try and get him engaged before he's raised up all the troops. Now, we don't want to attack him just yet. Yeah, you got to make sure he actually has those troops or else uh, he can just raise them up somewhere else. And these guys did join us to help us out. Right, excellent. So I don't think we'll be able to engage him there. No. Hmm. Alright, so he'd be defending the river crossing here. Could go this way. Either way, you gotta cross the river, though. Could just go after his capital, but I'd prefer to uh, win a battle here if we can. His troops are here. It looks like he's gonna come assist us. Okay, so yeah, we're looking to get a battle. Let's see if he can't get something conclusive here rather than these sieges. Or maybe just take out these 411 here. Yeah. He ran off. So they're trying to join forces. So I think we'll attack him in the forest. I believe we can win it. Now what I did not check to see who was commanding, and we're currently the commander and probably the, the best one available. I think we would command our own troops in this case. We are a martial guy. Uh, and we did not replace that spy master. Well... I suppose you could put the Prince Bishop into this position. Why not? He wanted a position. We still have him currently disrupting schemes. Could have him find secrets. We don't really have any schemes that we got going. Really kind of focus on just the romancing right now. Alright, so he decided to siege there. 
We're gonna have to deal with that. Do we have another council position? A steward. Okay, I didn't see that. Uh, so for right now, we probably just want somebody like a mayor to do this position. Somebody we wouldn't mind replacing if we need to. And then just have them collect the taxes so we don't lose too much of our money here. So we're gauging those 11, 1100 troops. The 400 know we're going to win this, so they did not reinforce them. And so yeah, we should be able to get uh, a good victory in this, this conflict. I think we're in a pretty good position at this point. And uh, I guess we're still doing our romance as well. So it seems that we brought Alma Berga with us on campaign. I suppose it makes sense we bring her. Uh, so we crouch side by side, the majestic heart in front of us, unaware of our presence. My own attention is unwavering, especially as her blouse brushes against us. When I reach over to embrace her, I find that she has also had her attention elsewhere. As the heart disappears in the forest, our naked flesh is already cradled by the soft earth, as well as each other. So for us to be together is only natural. This will result in her becoming our lover. Or we can say, to unite, only to come apart, it's all part of life. Hmm. I feel like having the doctor as your lover is only beneficial. And we can still seduce plenty of other women. Uh, so I think we're going to keep her as the lover. So yeah, let's go ahead and do the, the top option here. And yeah, we'll continue to uh, find other people to, to seduce. So we'll want to... Go ahead and find our next uh, next target, next trophy, I suppose. And I suppose you can have like a bunch of a bunch of lovers. So we want to try and romance a wet nurse next. Just going after them all, guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and start that seduction. And apparently, we can just bring them with us on campaign, no issues. All right, so. See how we want to do this. Do we want to go ahead and do a siege? We still got this siege ongoing over here. It's going to be nine months. That gets completed. We're not really close to winning this just yet. We do have our own siege engines here. I suppose we should go after the capital of the main leader. So we'll go and attack over here. Get this started. Let's see if we can't get the siege done quickly. It's going to be six months. So yeah, we'll take his location, and then we'll go out and deal with all these little armies that are all over the place. And, uh, the alliance has expired. Let's take a look at what's going on over here. Is that down here? Yeah, I think that's down here, guys. Okay, so we're allied with him because he was a cousin. And so it looks like his son here has inherited all those titles. So because you have the primogeniture, that also means that, uh, you know, all of our, you know, all of our AI countries are going to adopt that as well. And so you're not going to see as much splitting up as territory, uh, especially because we have the increased domain holdings. So it should help the AI a lot, because we will be splitting ours up to a degree, trying to give land to our other sons. Won't be quite at the level that you see with the partition inheritance, where like, uh... Your younger sons get huge chunks of your territory. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. Since we're just working on a siege currently. And yeah, doing this would not be enough to win it. But if they leave... Yeah, <laughs> that was silly. So they're trying to get all the troops together. Which is actually going to help us because we can have one decisive battle here. As soon as we finish up with this siege. Could let them finish their siege as well. And we captured a valuable prisoner. So we got his son and heir. Got that 27 gold as well. I did not take a look at the battle. Generally, I, I try and take a look at the battles and see how our knights do. So you know who uh, who served you well. Well, that's interesting. We can declare war on this Duke of Swabia. Oh, okay, so that's over somebody else's claims. Alright, but that's not the way we want to expand. Do we want to ransom... Any of these prisoners that we currently have obviously don't want to ransom Steven. But what about these other characters here? It doesn't look like we can actually get any money. It's just this mayor. He'd be able to ransom himself. 
He's an okay knight. It's 30 gold. We'll probably just wait until the, the war is over then. Since he is an okay knight. Do we want to let them finish this up? It's going to be three months. Because remember, if we start moving that way, then that army will join. So I think it's probably best to let them finish. Yeah, it's only three more months. And besides, look, at they're just going to keep bouncing around anyways. And our son and heir has come of age. All right, excellent. So how do you do in his education? He's an astute intellectual. All right, so we got the, the, the three stars. Certainly not the best, but not the worst either. All right, so remember, we can also send him to university. I think we have to wait until we play as him, though. I don't think there's an option to send him to university when you're not currently playing as him. So we need to find him a spouse. So that'll be a priority after we finish up this conflict. Yeah, let's finish this rebellion first. So yeah, it looks like they're just bouncing around as usual. AI hey, being silly. So we'll finish the siege up and that got us the 100%. So we don't even need to attack them. So it worked out nicely. All right, so let's go and enforce our demands and we'll arrest all these rebels. And we've got plenty of space here in our domain limit. I think we're gonna be taking some territory here. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and disband our troops. Looks like we're well on our way to our in our seduction. So we have enough room in our domain limit to take two counties, but we could also give out uh, one of the counties currently have if somebody has something that's uh, a bit better. So we have four currently. Let me just take a look at what we what we have here, because we haven't really done so. So you got the development of 11. It looks like they're all 11, except for that one. That one's not all that impressive. Also, this is French territory. So it's not of our culture, so you do get the penalties there, so we really need to convert those, honestly. Yeah, we should work on converting this. So that's something we need to to do with our uh, with our council. So I'm thinking we'll probably give up this one here. Though another thing to consider is, you know, what duchy they're in. So this is his own separate duchy here. This is the Duchy of Upper Lorraine, so you probably want to keep those two. I'm thinking maybe get rid of one of the, yeah, this one here, or could get rid of this one. But that's the only one that's of Fr Franconian culture, so I think we'll keep that. Yeah, we might get rid of that. We'll we'll see what all we can what we can get from these characters here. Because yeah, she currently has two counties, and so I can see taking those, at least one of them. Yeah, let's go and revoke her title. And so we're going to want to get the best one, which I guess we're going to need to take a look at that, because I don't know which one's the best one. They're both French, and they both have the eight development here. But this is where the duchy building is for the duchy of Bar. So if we wanted to create this duchy title, then that would be a good location to have. But again, I'm kind of feeling like we might want to give this one out here. Yeah, we'll probably take... This one here makes the most sense to take that. So let's go and do so. I'm gonna revoke that title from her. And what choice does she have? Now, of course, you could revoke another title from her, but uh, this would be tyrannical because we've already punished her. And so since she's been punished, we'll probably wanna now let her out for a ransom. Could force her to give us a hook as well. That'd be an option. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I don't think that's the way to go, because it's not a strong hook. It's just a weak hook. I prefer to have the money. We could, of course, kill her, since she's just going to be an issue. Yeah, I feel like we punished her. Her character's not, like, the cruelest or anything. I think it just fits our character. Just get the money. Let her out. She's been punished adequately. Losing her funds. Losing her title. So let's just ransom her. We don't want to piss her whole family off. So yeah, let's go and do the ransom. And then let's take a look the next prisoner to face justice. And that's gonna be this countess over here. It was quite a few countesses that caused problems. She only has one county. So you take her county and you get rid of her completely. And so her county is right here. Let me see, is this in the same duchy? It is in the same duchy. So we can really strengthen ourselves over here. Okay, so yeah, let's, let's go and take her county. That makes sense. Let's revoke that title. 
She is a criminal. And she has money to pay, but of course... Well, I guess it is going to give us a hundred here. Okay. So yeah, we'll take the hundred. She has no titles, but she does have all those claims. She has quite a few claims. So I was going to ransom her off. That's going to be a nice little sum of money there. All right, so let's take a look at the last of the counts who rebelled. And he was, of course, the leader of this rebellion. So that's something to keep in mind. He's got the two counties here as well. Pretty important location, too. Um, so let's go ahead, take a look at those two counties. I assume we're going to want to go for the Vorms one. It's got the development of 12. What's his other location here? That's this one here. Okay, and that's also development 12. They're both pretty good. And of our culture. And he's got uh, efficient taxation there, too. Okay. So let's go ahead and revive, uh, revoke his title as well. Of course, that's going to put us over our domain holding limit. That's okay. We already have plans to do something with those other titles. So what do you do with the man who led this rebellion? A deceitful, ambitious man who's never going to stop. Yeah, he's never going to stop. You kill him. His son's going to be upset, but he's a trusting, honest chase person. So not really the, the person you got to be too concerned about. I just feel like he led the rebellion. You could just ransom him, of course. I don't know. This is a just punishment. Or a person who led a rebellion, I feel. So I think we're probably going to execute him. I don't see anything else they might want to do with him. So yeah, let's just go and execute him. Of course, his son's going to be quite upset with us. But I'm not too concerned about him. But I guess we'll see. We'll see if he's a threat in the future. Alright, so we do have other prisoners we need to take care of here. So we got this mayor. We're just going to go ahead and ransom him. Get that nice 30 gold there. And then with these last two characters, we'll, we'll see what we want to do with them. Uh, we got a lowborn character here who's not a good knight, but a decent martial skill. He's one-eyed. The traveler. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we're going to want to recruit him. So let's just get the, the weak hook on him. Let him go. And then this character here, also not a great, not a great knight. He's a wise man, though. He's deceitful. He's an older guy. Let's just go ahead and gain the weak hook. I don't really want him in the court. All right, so that's all of the prisoners. And so now we need to grant out territory. How old is our youngest son? He's getting there. He's got all his traits. I feel like it's time for our sons to, to rule. So we need to arrange marriages for them. And then go ahead and set them up in their inheritance. Give them a, a county to rule. And what's nice about setting your, your children up, of course, that allows them to start making mistakes and <laughs> getting themselves killed or uh, doing all kinds of disastrous things. Uh, but what's nice is it also allows them to you know start completing their own goals, start going down their uh, hurt tree. So yeah. I think it would make sense to give them both a title. Maybe we'll just give uh, our eldest son a title first, since he's the only one who uh, is of age. And this is another thing I really like about having that primogeniture mod, is that I don't feel like I have to constantly give titles to like children. Uh, often, when you start getting close to death, and you know the inheritance is going to be happening, and you don't have control of it, and so the only real way you can have some measure of control is by deciding what titles your younger children get, since you can't decide what titles your your eldest gets. He just gets the uh, the primary ones and whichever ones the game wants to give you, and you can't give him any of the titles that his, his younger brothers are already set to get. And so instead you have to give the younger brothers uh, titles in order to kind of you know influence the inheritance. And so it results in me, a lot of times, granting out titles to young children when I'm getting close to death, to the younger sons, so that I can kind of control what titles my eldest son will inherit. And that's something we don't have to do. Because, you know, if we were to die or whatever, we're not, we're not close to death in this particular case, but if we were to die, we could just go ahead and uh, have his brother give those titles out, since he wouldn't inherit anything. So another benefit of using this mod.
But yeah, we'll do all that next episode. Also, it looks like we'll be getting that claim soon, so it's good that we got this nice little batch of money since we will have to pay for that claim. Uh, we're going to have to deal with the low control. If, I, if we keep any of these counties that have low control, which yeah, I assume that uh, they're all the ones we just took. So we'll have to get that increase. Frankly, we need to change up what all of our uh, you know, all of our council members are doing. We might want to take a look at that as well because that could have changed up who all needs positions since uh, all these adjustments with uh, territory we just made. So we'll deal with all that in episode three. Hope you guys did enjoy this one. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. We hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.